At the end of the offertory, at the secret of this Mass, we pray, supported by the spouse of thy most holy mother's patronage, we beseech thy clemency. Make our hearts hate the things of earth and love thee, the real God, with perfect charity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes, not that we need an excuse, we might consider that the drastic state of the church, all of her divisions and the schisms, the heresy and the rest of it, would excuse us from striving to personal holiness. St. Vincent Ferrer, a great preacher during what was called the church's Western schism, 15th century Europe, would have none of that excuse. But he explained to people that God sends tribulation and infirmities so that we could pay him what we owe for our sins. He used um, a remarkable imagery in a little parable to explain how this works to the people. Two men, he said, were in debtor's prison, owing their king a great sum of money. Both were broke and had not wherewith to pay. The king in his mercy comes and prepares two big heavy bags of gold. And he throws them towards the two men in debt. They get hit in the head with the gold. It hurts. One of them, rubbing his head, walks away angry at the king. And the other bends down and sees all of the coins on the ground and kneels and thanks his majesty for his mercy, and with those same coins pays what he owes to the king. It is the same thing with us. How much we owe God. He has given us so much. How much we owe God. We have stolen so much from his glory, from the first very moment of our conscious life. And to boot, Today, we're spiritually broke, and who of us has not had occasion to file some chapter 11 papers with the Almighty because we are so hopelessly in debt? But our king, in his clemency, descends, and he drops down from heaven all of the money we need to pay the debt, not inflated paper but the hard coin, the currency of the cross, heavy with precious metal, which means patience. And what does it matter in the end if we do get hit in the head with it? We're rich. We can settle our account. We've got enough to left, left over to live on. What a way to look upon suffering, and its role in the plan of our merciful Father. Today, we ask his clemency in the name of his earthly father, St. Joseph, in order, this is what we're praying for at the offertory, to despise earthly things. In other words, never to give them our heart. Not our car, and not our bank account, and not our home, or anything else, because our heart goes to God, the real God, not these idols of stuff and, and things. God we love with all of our heart, sometimes. But a lot of the time, we resist his mercy. Even when it hits us on the head. And the worst of it is that there are some who dare deny that mercy, which is a good name for God, exists. But if that be so, why does suffering hurt so much? And who else, 
Who else has the key to heaven in suffering? But I think the rest of us, a good deal of the time, wonder about the part of God being all merciful. Sometimes the very things we pray for, the suffering and illness against the separation of death because of the toll that a war takes on a family or a nation, the want induced by poverty, in a word, every possible hurt and every harm we could know, those very things we pray against, he who suffered for us, freely, leaving us an example, he uses, not coldly to afflict us, but for a greater mercy. Who could miss it? It hits us in the head sometimes. And yet few are they who will stop and pick up this gold and redeem their lives with it. A mercy. Remember, that is the definition of mercy. Love's answer to man's misery. In so many ways, to open our eyes to this world and to the next, it is a mercy which lets us see sin as the cause of suffering. Not God up there turning some machine against us, but man here below drawing down all of the sorrow upon us because of the evil of his sin, making this beautiful earth a hell at times when it could be a place of peace and of contentment. But the mercy of God in this is this. Out of evil, he is all the time drawing good. And for those who read the story with God, there is always a happy ending. But we Catholics do not believe in cheap grace in the false mercy of a sentimental approach, a man-made religion, any more than we believe that the governments of men and mere laws could stop the massacre of innocence, whether in the classroom or in the womb. God's story has a happy ending, but man cannot write his own ending and insert it, tack it on, before time. Unrepented mortal sin, man's stubbornness, blocks heaven's gate, and original sin Man's first no to God is an obstacle to the beatific vision. And there is nothing to be done about these truths because they are true. We have the word of God for it. And thus our theologians propose limbo for a solution to the problem of infants dying without baptism and unable to have a baptism of desire. We Catholics are confident in God's mercy to our littlest ones as well as to our biggest ones who wander, and we are content to leave them to him without tinkering with theology, rejecting those parts of revelation which don't fit in to today's trendy thinking. Today we come to church 
to thank great St. Joseph for all of the protection he gives to the whole of the Catholic Church, Christ's mystical body, as well as for the example he provides us, he who had seven sorrows like his wife, the Virgin Mary, as well as seven joys. St. Joseph stands for those who suffer still in head or in heart or in the flesh. But today, too, we're asking that little doctor, the child Jesus, for healing, for relief. Did you ever think that just to say that prayer or any prayer is already a mercy of our Lord? We can never forget that mercy. There was a monk about 50 years ago in in Kentucky who wrote a beautiful prayer about mercy within mercy within mercy. It is everywhere. Do you know the origin of the Red Cross? It comes from a Catholic, of course, source, a religious order founded in 18th century Rome by St. Camillus of Lellis. He dedicated his life to the sick, but he was rejected from several religious orders before he founded his own because he had a bad leg with an open wound which just never would heal. Towards the end of his life, he collected as well two painful sores on the soles of his feet. And finally, before death, He had a terrible distaste for food and an inability to retain it. And yet you would see him in the hospital ward, a patient now himself, creep out of bed at night and crawl from bed to bed to check on his patients if they needed anything. And if anyone ever alluded to his wounds, he would just smile and gesture. The mercies of the Lord, he called them. Stay there this Sunday by the wounds of our Lord with all of his saints and St. Joseph in chief. Stay by the cross as it unfolds before the eyes of our faith in this sacrifice of the Mass and see his mercies. It is all mercy, really. It is money given us from heaven in order to use this world as we should. And never mind if it comes with a sting. It is mercy to see this world in a different way enough to make you want to stop on your way and to pick some of that money up, never mind the pain, and use it to pay what you owe to God. And surely then, you too, you will see him in the next. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.